This was the end of September. And did he ever express why he wanted to go to the election? No, I immediately assumed that they were trying to keep you guys from cheating them. So, <laughs> so I wrote up the documentation of what you would look for in the source code, how you would make sure that you to Mrs. Yang and said, here's your report, here's your program. And she said, you don't understand, we need to hide the fraud in the source. In the source code. Hide the fraud, not reveal the fraud. Not reveal the fraud because it's needed to, con to control the vote in South Florida, is what she said. Whoa, That's what she whoa. said. That's to, your knowledge, to your knowledge, was this used? I have no idea. I, I was ready to leave. So, <laughs> so I retired and left the company. Your testimony a moment ago, I think you said just before you left and answered the Congresswoman Ted Jones question. The, would you just repeat what you said in terms of uh, the, the uh, exit polls? Oh, the exit polls should not be significantly different from the vote. And if they were, you would conclude what? I would conclude someone's playing with the vote. Now with the exit polls? That's possible too. Okay. Something, why something is definitely skewed. Something is skewed in one or the other vote. Right. To select which one, you'd have to see where the problem is. Let me ask you one further question. Assuming for the moment that such software, that's what you call it, such software to, to rig a vote was used in one or more machines in Ohio or in Florida, could you today detect that if you look at the source code? If you can get the machines and they have not been patched yet, I mean, once they get in and touch them, anything can happen. You can also set timers to do that, but then you see the timers. Then you'd have to take those machines decompile them, which I couldn't do, but possibly a Microsoft, or MIT, something could do, you might, you might be able to see it. You might. Not Depends on how good they are at destroying what they had. Destroying what they had by tampering the machine afterwards or by programming a, a destroyed uh, instruction in the first place? Right, because since you didn't... Both, either or both? Either or both. You, you didn't actually see what's in there, so you don't know if the code is running in a single executable or running in a various modules. If running modules, you can make the code actually eat itself. Let me ask you one further question. We, I have heard, I've been told that people who assume that lots of the election results, that a large fraction of the election result in the state may have been affected by uh, deliberate fraud in the computer are, are paranoid because in order to do that, you have to have access to thousands of machines and that, that would be readily detectable. To what extent is that true? It depends on the technology you use. If you did a central tabulation machine that fed in, all you'd have to do is set a flag. You set a flag, the central, tab central tabulation machine would then flip your vote. So if you... So one person putting in bad code in a central tabulation machine could affect thousands and thousands or tens of thousands of votes. Right, and you could activate and, you could activate you automatically, or you could make it so that there's code existing on like an electronic machine that feeds it, where you would punch it in, it would set the flag, the server would see the flag, and then... And if you had a recount, uh, and there were no, no paper trail, would that be, as soon as that, that had happened, would that be revealable? by seeing a discrepancy between what the tabulator, the central tabulator showed and what the individual machines, which had not been tampered with, showed? Not if I wrote it. Why not? In other words, in other words... I would make it match. You could, you could work back from the tabulator to the individual machines, so the tabulator would tell the machines to switch their results? Yes. It talks both ways. You can Congress look into whatever you need. And they actually do talk to each other, just yes. the machines and the tabulator. As long as they're hooked up, as long as it's networked together, they can talk to each other. So in other words, there's absolutely no assurance whatsoever on anything with regard to these machines. Absolutely none, unless you look at the source code and make sure it's safe before it goes in. Thank you very much. Thank you, Congressman Matters. Uh, I know that Congresswoman Warren has a question, and then Senator Miller, and then Congresswoman Stephanie Tubbs Jones. This will uh, only take a moment if you would come back to the. Uh, <laughs> I'm doing uh, this. As you know, um, there, there has been a lot of uh, discussion about, uh, I think it was Diebold, um company, their relationship to the president and, and the administration, and supposedly comments about uh, helping to ensure 
that the president was reelected. In your world, in your environment, uh, have you heard any of this kind of discussion? Do you know people for Debo? Uh, do you have any sense of any um, actions that may have been taken? I don't know anything about that at all. Yeah. Thank you. Sorry. Senator Miller. Thank you, Madam Chair. Sir, I suspect people will attack you in terms of your credibility. Could you restate once again your, your credentials? Uh, I'm a programmer. I worked for NASA, worked for ExxonMobil, worked for um, for Department of Transportation, and other elements of my story. Because this company, well, let's get into it. Why not? <laughs> this company also they have NASA contracts, and they were basically downloading tons of information, I mean gigabytes worth, and handing them off to this little Chinese guy named Henry Neve, and it didn't seem right. And you know, he was hacking things, and I wrote a program for DOT that allowed contractors to send their information into DOT, and he was kind of the quality assurance guy for software. He put a wiretapping module in the program that went out to the contractors so that it actually sent everything they sent back to Yang. So I reported all this, and just last March, I think, he was arrested for attempting to send anti-tank missile chips to the capital of Communist China. So, if that's correct, this is such a small thing. <laughs> of course, I think he only got a hundred dollar fine. And no time. Thank you. Congresswoman Stephanie Tuff-Jones. Thank you. Thank you. We're, we are now going to... Um, back to the public testimony, and 